Okay, listen. <laughs> I was trying to decide whether or not I was even going to review this damn show because I I wasn't that interested. I'm not even going to hold you. I wasn't, like, Power was a really good show. We all can agree that, you know, Power fell off the last couple of seasons and whatnot. Um, And Power Book 2, you know, Ghost, that's a really, really good fucking show. Um, But, you know, I wasn't so much interested in Kanan's backstory, you know? Like, I'm not really one for prequels, you know? Like, because we already know Kanan going to end up dead. Jukebox going to end up dead. She gay. Like, it's like, like, what is there to say? Like, what is there to tell? Like, every time we think Kanan about to die, he clearly not going to because hello you know so i wasn't really too interested in in watching this show let alone reviewing it but i was like you know what fuck it let's go ahead and do it because i know that once ghost comes on i'm gonna want to review that and so it's like let's let's get into it right so i watched episode one a week late like this is literally sunday as i'm recording this like sunday the 25th and i watched uh you know power uh you know, the first episode, um, a week late because child, it was a hella stressful fucking week. And again, I was, was not sure if I wanted to watch it. So as I watched episode one today, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but what I will say since I didn't do a review on it is that this show, I understand that we're trying to build up the story. Like I, I totally get that. I get that. But more needs to happen. More needs to happen. Like, this is the worst spinoff with the best theme song, okay? Like, make it make sense. Like, it moved so slow, and even episode two moved really, really fucking slow. And, you know, up until the last five minutes, and then it was like, okay, cool, okay? And see, after us being used to power, like... Power has this thing, right? Like, you could tell us the same directors, same writers, same team, all of that. But in order to not get redundant, it needs to be more happening because we're going to get bored. Because it's the same acting, same things going on, just different people, okay? We could call it a different story, but it's the same fucking universe of power. And so, you know, like... we. I just needed more to happen. I just needed more to fucking happen, right? Um, episode one was okay. I mean, you know, it dragged out. It really did. It was good, but in terms of power, it's like, okay, like, this is motherfucking power. Come on, Courtney Camp. Come on, 50. Like, let, let, let's really knock it up. And speaking of 50, it's like, you know, all of us is wondering, like, is he going to keep narrating throughout this show? Like, because it's really giving get Richard I'm trying, and I'm going to need it not to. Like, I'm going to need it to give... Raising Kanan, not raising Curtis, okay? So, starting off this motherfucking episode, like I said, the theme song is, it's a bop. You know, out of all three shows, I feel like this is, you know, the one that's, like, a real fucking bop. And, um, you know, I love that 50 Cent is, like, so self-centered like me. Like, come on, like, this is my motherfucking show. I'm going to work my motherfucking business. You know, I'm going to work my music because this is my show and I'm going to promote my music. So I love the fact that his theme song isn't like five seconds, but it's literally like the whole fucking song. Because it's like, by the end of this shit, end of this show, y'all bitches going to know every word to this shit. And y'all going to be buying. If you ain't going to buy my music, you're going to at least buy this theme song that I wrote and recorded. Yes, Curtis, I'm here for it. So this episode starts off with Rock. Um, She basically sitting Kanan down at the table and listen. For somebody <laughs> that put the damn dog in the microwave, she is nervous as fuck about her little baby going back to school since he became a killer. Like, she's a hot-ass nervous wreck. And I'm like, Raquel, Raquel, get it together, okay? Get it together. You better act like you really rocky, bitch, and, 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 and make it do what it do. Like, because she was just way too fucking nervous. And I'm like... You know, there was a lot of parallels in this episode with everybody. It's like everybody was acting one way, but then doing another or doing something and then acting a different way. And it was just throwing me off. I'm like, okay, so we're seeing multiple, you know, sides of motherfuckers, I guess, right? So Kanan goes outside and he's about to walk to school, you know, and we see this car that's pulling up. And I'm like, oh shit, they about to pop, 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 pop. And then that's when you got Rock yelling at Kane, and she like, yo, remember, be alert. You got to keep your eyes open at all times. But it was literally supposedly just a newspaper guy dropping off a newspaper. I said, Raquel, I can see you're going to be a damn motherfucking problem, bitch, because the way your anxiety is set up mixed with my anxiety, it just, it, it just ain't going to work. It ain't going to work, okay? And was I the only one who caught the fact that the nigga was hooded and in the backseat? I said, okay. Now, either this is some sort of, like, error in writing 
Um, or like this is like really an area where everybody truly on some hood shit, like the teachers, the preachers, the because it, it's like you delivering newspapers, but yet you in the back seat and you hood it the fuck up like you about to do a drive by. Okay, but remember that word drive by because of, of course this wouldn't be power without one, right? <laughs> We're gonna come back to it. Okay, but listen. I felt like whoever that was that was riding by, eventually, somehow, somewhere, you're going to cross paths again with Canaan. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I got a little vibe about that, right? So, we get to the school, and Canaan, you know, he gets to school, and then if they ain't fighting in the hallway, right? And the shit is just fucking crazy to me. Because in elementary and middle school, we used to get so damn excited when people would fight. Like, you'd be pissed as hell if you miss school. And then that's the motherfucking day that Shanique would beat Dominique's ass, right? But see, now as an adult, I don't even know how I'm watching this gangster ass shit, okay? Because the streets is not for me. Like, I'm all about peace and blueberries now. Like, why can't we all just get along, right? Like, what in the ghetto shit is fucking going on? So this is the part that starts confusing me. <clears throat> because why was it two cops that came and showed up and stopped the girls from fighting? Like, not security, but cops. I'm like, where do they do that at? Like, who actually has police officers inside their school, or is Jamaica Queens that fucking bad that, you know, motherfuckers are scared that they're gonna die when they get their education, okay? And something else. Something else. Something else. Canaan's Spanish friend. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Canaan's Spanish friend, Okay. Because, and this is something that I'm passionate about. I mean, well, I'm just passionate about conversation and social commentary, period, right? But here's why I feel like the word nigga in a conversation around the N-word is such bullshit. Because y'all love to say who can and can't say the word. But for me, I was raised with nigga and nigger being two different words, right? And I'm glad that this show is being authentically New York. And showing a Spanish person saying nigga, because that is truly the culture here, right? See, online, you got people that's from all over the world. And like, don't get me wrong. Like, if you're in the middle of, you know, in, in the middle of fucking Georgia or in the middle of fucking, you know, hickneck, redneck Texas, like, I can totally understand why, you know, your views might be different because you're in a, you know, a racist, you know, setting. And I, I get it. But what I want people to understand is that up here in, in New York, Jersey, tri state area is different. And a lot of us was raised with with the mentality of nigga and nigger are two different words. And as long as somebody don't call you with an ER, then nigga is just a term of endearment. So we don't be going up like that for people who say it. Because especially, especially like in situations like this, it's like brown, black, we all one in the same. We all one in the same. Spanish, Dominican, Cuban, black, like we all one in the motherfucking same up here. You know what I'm saying? So... I just wanted to fucking um, point that out because, you know, like I said, NYC is a, it's a different breed. Like, y'all y'all can keep that whole you can't say the N-word energy online, but trust me, y'all ain't coming up here to, to New York and saying that to anyone up here because New York is literally a mixed breed and everybody is thrown in together. Black, brown, we're all seen as one, un like, unfortunately and fortunately. So it's literally the norm to see a Puerto Rican say a nigga. Like... And at the end of the day, we all was on the same motherfucking ship, just different, just different stops. Okay, like nobody even blinks an eye when motherfuckers say that shit up here. So you know, of course, in 2021, you know, everybody loves trauma bonding and everybody offended by everything and whatever. And I guess that's just something that we gonna argue about to the end of time. But for me, I just feel like nigger and nigga are two different words. And as long as I'm not being hit with the ER, I won't have to hit you. Okay, and send you to the ER. How about that? Let's let's talk about it, right? So. Um, moving it along, moving it along, um, you know, if y'all ain't got a problem with Cardi, Erica, Benna, Sin Santana, Tahiri, or Jocelyn saying nigga, then don't do it now, okay? But like I said, I just love the fact that this show is, like, so authentically New York, and I mean, of course it's gonna be, because we got, you know, Curtis Jackson up here producing this shit, but, you know, from the accents, from the way that they talk, from the way that they look, like, it's just authentically New York, and I love that shit, so... We get to a diner, and they discussing shit, and don't ask me what the fuck was said, because, bitch, I was too busy taking notes. Like, again, this show is such a fucking slow burn, and I might be gonna hold you. Some other shit happened, but I tuned out, <laughs> okay? Like, and <clears throat> hold up, child. I'm choking, and not in a good way. I tuned out with this fucking show, like, and that, happened, that has happened a lot in the last two episodes, like, I completely understand 
it's a it, like I get that they set up the story, but chow. So we get to a bar. Um, again, like it, it's just giving me repetitive vibes. Like, it, like I understand we in the power universe, but like, can we come up with something else? Like, then we already do the club thing. Like, then somebody already owned the club. Now we doing it again. Like, again, same story, different characters. Like, I, I'm over it. And so, Rock's brother, you know, it goes to the bar to see Music Note. You know, the little light skinned nigga that's trying to fuck her, or whatever. And he tries to come off hard to him, but then he lets him know, you know, he's just busting his balls and trying to make sure he right for Rock. Now, something tells me that little choir boy either got a dark past of his own or he's trying to escape. But this wouldn't be, pa- you know, this wouldn't be power if he didn't get brought right back into this fucking world. Like, I already see where this fucking shit is going, Courtney, okay? And so Marvin ends up seeing the white girl, right? He goes to see the white girl. You know, she's still upset about that damn dog. And they talk about something, but child again, I zoomed out, okay? Um, I mean, or maybe that was Lulu. Because child, they, them actors look so damn alike. I don't know who was who. Am I the only one? Child, like seriously, where the fuck is this show even going? Because it felt like I was watching Baddies ATL. It was just like, okay, like I feel like we built it up to something, but I'm not really sure. Like, and it's crazy too because at some point in the episode, the boy, um, the boy at the trap house was like, you know, I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm your babysitting again. I'm like, that's exactly how I feel right now. I feel like I'm babysitting Kanan because exactly what the fuck is supposed to be going on? Like, I feel like I'm just here, okay, just watching him, but nothing's really going on. Okay. Now we see Cobb Howard, you know, he pulling up to some sort of sewing shop. And of course, again, it would not be power. It would not be a gangster show without a dirty ass cop and a hidden trap lair hidden in the back of some other swimming store. I mean, can y'all come up with something else? Okay. Like I'm not even a street bitch and I can see just how y'all be getting caught out here. Cause y'all, y'all moving in all the wrong and cliche ways. It's like, girl, so we got this little street scene, you know, you got Kanan in the gang, they walking down the street, they questioning jukebox, and of course, her little insecure gay ass, okay, she don't want to ride, because she's trying to go get some pussy, okay, and did y'all catch when her daddy was like, you want to ride, and she was like, no, dad, I'm straight, I said, see, that's my problem right there, let's talk about it, okay, because bitch, you don't even sound convincing, that don't even sound convincing, bitch, okay, talking about something, no, dad, I'm straight, in what world, in what world, okay, now, Rock and somebody... Okay, whatever actor that was, they pull up to Kanan's friends. And, you know, the Spanish boy is like, stop trying to talk to my sister. Like, he, he making it very obvious, you know, without coming out and directly telling Lulu, like, I don't want you talking to my sister. Okay? And they go inside the store, and I'm like, damn. Like, I, I hope that ain't his sister right there, because whoever that bitch was at the counter, girl, she was fucked up. She was fucked up, okay? Like, had the red eye, swollen eye, all of that. And I'm like, who don't fuck Spanish fish up? She need to go sit on somebody's couch and talk about that. Like, how you just out in public looking like that, bitch? That would have been a day I had. I would have took my sick day that day. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I would have had to use a vacation day. Use some of my vacation time. Okay? Mm-mm. Not looking like that. I would not have. Nope. PTO. Okay? Prepare the others, because I wouldn't be there with a black eye. Okay, and not even a black eye, a red eye. Like, bitches, that shit's still bleeding. Get you some ice. You in a fucking bodega. Like, it's right there in front of you, girl. Now, you got Rock speaking to Poppy about, I guess they was, like, trying to figure out renting his store or some shit like that so they can move work up out of there. And, you know, Poppy eventually agrees because, come on, like, he probably trying to send that money back home. Listen, not being stereotypical, but being stereotypical, okay? I know my people. Come on, New York. Okay, come on, New York. He probably trying to send that money back home. That's usually how I go. So at the same time, you got Jukebox Daddy um, showing Marvin, you know, his new trap house, right? And I said, wow, y'all just so calculated with this shit. It's just, this is just a fascinating world, but not so fascinating that I want to be in it, bitch. Listen, I'm trying to live, okay? You got Jukebox on the street. She hustling off clothes and shit. I'm loving, again, how authentically New York this shit is. It's the accents and the culture for me. But listen, I bet you they ain't film this shit in Southside Jamaica, Queens. Nope. I said, bitch, this look like Bushwick. Okay? These hoes in Williamburg, like, apparently she out here making money with this fine-ass nigga so she can have some studio time. I said, come on, bitch. You better go ahead and did that. But then I really, like, because at first I was beginning, like, I was like, why is her name Jukebox? And I'm like, oh, I get it because she's saying. Which then made me sad as hell because I'm like, we know ultimately the bitch did nothing with her gift and she became a cop and then went out sad. So what the fuck is really good, bitch? Okay? What the fuck is really good? <clears throat> and I guess what, that's what these last two episodes was about. Just It's like we know how they ended up, but it's like, I guess they trying to show how everybody was supposed to be on a straight and arrow and then just ended up there. Like, listen... 
listen, we're gonna stop with the bullshit. We're gonna like for real, we're gonna stop with the bullshit, right? And this is why I can't wait. Listen, let's start their podcast. It's coming soon. If y'all enjoy the TV show reviews and the story times, wait till I do um, uh, you know, um my social commentary. Of course, I'm gonna have hot topic videos and stuff like that coming as well, but wait till I do, you know, my social commentary podcast because we're gonna talk about some shit, and I got a lot of uncon uh, a lot of controversial opinions on a lot of shit. Like what we not about to sit here and do is act like everybody's so goody two shoes and just happen to end up with a gun in their hand and now on the streets. That's what we not going to do. Like some of y'all niggas really just do this shit because you think it's cool. Like we, we not about to do that. And that's the problem that I have with some black people when, you know, some of our culture, when it's like, y'all always want to make an excuse for everything. Like, no, everybody ain't out here as a fucking thug and a gangster because of the fucking white man. We, we going to stop with that shit. Now, does it happen? Of course. Does gentrification happen and kick motherfuckers out and now they got to sell drugs? Okay, of course. But we're going to stop acting like drugs and stripping is the only the only way for motherfuckers to make it out. Like, we're we going to stop that. There's been days where I have not eaten. There's been days where I could have been fucking homeless. But I didn't go and say, ooh, let me sell coke on the corner. So cut, cut the shit. Cut the shit. Because most of y'all niggas, before you even get into some shit, it ain't like you got a fucking record. So it ain't like you can't go down to McDonald's and apply for a motherfucking job. Y'all niggas just be trying to be cool and shit. Y'all niggas just be trying to, you know, be down with the wave and, and, and be a part of the scene. Like, let's really talk about it. Let's start there. Let's start there. Because there was no motherfucking reason that Kanan should have became what he became. I understand you care about your mother and you don't want your mother to get hurt. I, I get all that. I get all that. Okay. But that's the part where you, you fucking go move somewhere else, understand that your mother is a grown-ass motherfucking adult, and then you leave. Or even after you shot the nigga that was shooting after your mother, okay, then you leave. And even with your mother, it's like, that, that, that's another thing, too. It's like, y'all bitches, y'all get in the fucking street, and y'all get addicted to the shit, and then y'all don't want to leave, okay? Talk about something, oh, this is all I ever known, and, and I, can't, I can't go nowhere. Bitch, why can't you? You just made 10000 yesterday selling Coke. Why can't you? That's enough to put a down payment, you know, first slash security. Let's really talk about it. Let's start there. Why can't you? Why can't you? Y'all be acting so fucking trapped. No, you're not trapped. You're just addicted to the fucking trap. But moving it along, Kanan is tired of playing video games. He ready to start selling. Exactly. Let's start there. Because you want to do this shit. You don't want to play video games like a regular little boy. No, you want to be on some grown man shit. You thinking you Tariq, okay? You thinking you motherfucking ghost, and you want to be out on the street selling. Because you you have the fantasy. You have the fucking lifestyle. And at, at some point, either in episode one or two, he even said that shit to his mother. Like, listen, you always knew I was going to be this. You you wanted me to be this. And this is what I want to be. Because what you think I'm about to go have some white collar job and be, you know, like some corny white nigga? Yeah. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Y'all hate white people that much that anything that's being just like them, you despise? Because there's definitely an episode that's coming where we're going to talk about, you know, how sometimes we just be doing too much and always blaming it on white people when really it's because we're triggered with something that has nothing to do with them. What's wrong with living a corny lifestyle? Oh, because your friends is going to clown you. They're going to call you a white boy. Okay, what's what's wrong with that? If being successful <coughs> and not having to dodge bullets. <coughs> Hold up, child. My fucking allergies is acting up. And plus, I'm sitting right in front of the fan. Fan got the nerve to have an air conditioner on my back. <laughs> child, she doing a lot. Okay. But what's wrong with living a successful life? Like, you're choosing to... Like, I'm sorry. The second that you sign up for the streets is the second that you sign up for, for, for death. Because now you're choosing a life where you're always running from a bullet. And that's what your mother even told you, Kanan. Like, you don't really want this world because that same bullet that you're shooting out, guess what? You're going to run from it from the rest of your fucking life. We all know what the streets is. Like, you either make it... You don't make it out alive. You either go to jail or you end up dead, six feet under. But he he's super excited to start selling. And, you know, like, I'm just like, ain't nobody trying to live a straight, regular, narrow life. Like, and I get it. It's a TV show. But, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking more so from a social commentary aspect of, like, real life. Like, of course, we watching this shit for the shits and giggles and entertainment. Of course. But, like, 
for real. Like, y'all have a choice. And I, I hate when people act like they don't have a choice when you clearly do. Like, and if niggas are shooting after your moms, then go ahead and do the quote-unquote white boy thing and call a cop. Sure, do what you feel like you got to, but you say, oh, I'm going to protect my mother by getting in the same streets that's shooting after her, so I can now become a, a target, I can now become a threat. Like, let's make it make sense, because the math ain't mathing. And even when the math do be mathing, y'all be acting like it don't, so y'all can stay stuck and don't move. Like, you can't afford first class and, and security on a new apartment in the suburbs. Ciao. Again, chasing the fantasy, and we're going to talk about it, okay? Now, Kanan is going around his house, you know, snooping, and he run into some nigga that's like, yeah, I'm not your teacher. I'm your babysitter. I'm like, this grown nigga at this grown-ass age? Okay, listen. Raquel, whatever your fucking name, Raquel, Rachel, Ramada, make up your motherfucking mind. Either your son is about to get rich or die trying. Like, either your son is about to get rich or die trying. Which one is it about to be? Okay, because Rock one came in to be street adjacent so bad that it's sickening. Like, you want him to be in the streets, but then you don't. It's like, you could be around the streets. Like, you could be on the sidewalk. Like, matter of fact, you could be on the porch. I want you to be on the porch behind the gate. You could look at the streets, but I don't want you actually in the streets. Like, and it's like the streets still going to touch him because he's outside. Make it make sense. So then you got Jukebox, a.k.a. Laverne, with her insecure ass. And, you know, she's out with her white girlfriend trying to buy her some clothes, you know, for the dance. But, of course, you know, Jukebox is, you know, she's acting like Laverne. Okay? Acting like Laverne. Acting like a little pussy. All up in her feelings. Like, mama, mama, are you going to be a tough bitch or a sensitive bitch? Okay? Pick one. Because you're a little too soft. And this is what I was saying earlier about all the fucking dualities of this show. It's like, everybody want to be so hard, but they not. And I'm glad that they ended up kissing because the building tension between them, it was starting to get stale and it was starting to get on my goddamn nerves. I said, Jukebox, you better be careful because no one Courtney, your daddy or somebody probably right across the street watching you be gay and it's going to come up at some other fucking point. Like, we all know it ain't just going, like, come on. This wouldn't be a TV show if, you know, she wasn't dragged out the closet like me, okay? Like, it, it's going to be exposed at some point. Now, you got Kanan, who's still pissed about not being on the block yet. And, you know, you got Rock. That's like, listen, little nigga, you got to learn how to be a follower before you can leave. Like, I put your ass in that trap house for two reasons. To keep you safe, just like your daddy did me when I was pregnant with your ass, and to see if you know how to follow orders. I said, oh, okay, so we playing games. Rocky, we ain't got time for no motherfucking games. We got to get this wet. Okay, what are we doing? What are we doing? Put that nigga out there. Again, she want him to be shooter to Jason so bad. Put that little nigga out there. If he die, he die. That's just part of the game, right? Okay, teach him how to play so he wins. Okay, but we got to get this bread so y'all can get the fuck out of this town. Okay, but then this show will probably be over eight episodes. So, yeah, I guess. I guess. So, we back in the streets. You know, Lulu pulls up on Kanan's friend. You know, as he's walking down the block and tells him to get in the car. And I didn't know what this was all about. Okay, and so, you know, after, and I read on Twitter, but he tells him, you know, um, to get in the car just as Jukebox is getting off the bus. And apparently, you know, the people were saying, okay, um, that Jukebox, you know, she looked the way that she did because she kind of knew, like, Lulu being with um, D-Wiz that it was, you know, it, it was going to turn out bad. Like, he was basically, you know, getting in the car and riding to his funeral. So we see Marvin helping, you know, Avril Lavigne at the bar, you know, his little white girlfriend. And we see Kanan at the house reading the newspaper, you know, because um, D-Wiz was supposed to meet up with him at the house. He was supposed to watch a movie. And again, that's like, see, that's this is what I'm saying. It's like, okay, you got stars on your fucking bedroom ceiling. Okay, you sitting here watching fucking movies, child. Okay, like, you, you sitting here playing video games. It's like, baby, do you want to be a teenager or a thug? Like, let's make it make fucking sense. Like, you sitting here playing with joysticks, but you need to be, you know, whipping up that Coke in the kitchen. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Like, it's like everybody is struggling to be who they really want to be or struggling to be something they not. Child. So. He sees his wannabe girlfriend. He comes out to, you know, holler at her, console her. She says something about the baby. I guess the mother a crackhead or some shit and she don't trust her mother around a bit. I don't know. Again, tuned out. Okay. But I'm like, y'all really about to stay in the same spot that you just got shot at? Like, it couldn't be me. It, it couldn't be me. Like, y'all a little too comfortable and casual to be standing in a driveway hot spot. Okay? I can never relate, and I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, so Marvin comes outside the club, you know, with Avril Lavigne, and he's passing through the line. You know, and he tells this girl he likes her coat, and she's like, oh, I know. I said, Mona, bitch. <laughs> Courtney, bitch. That is me. That is something that I most definitely would fucking say. Like, oh, yeah, nigga, I know. Okay? So these niggas is trying to punk Marvin, right? And, you know, like, so that he can let them in. 
And he like, nah, y'all gonna have to wait like everybody else. I said, ooh, come on, Marvin. Marvin trying to put his motherfucking foot down. I said, yes, nigga, yes, daddy. Okay, so I'm thinking Lulu was about to take this boy to the trap, but he takes him to the bar. He gives him some money or a condom, I would assume, so that he could lose his damn virginity. Okay, I said, what in the damn pedophile shit is going on? I'm like, I know you're not grooming this nigga. Courtney, I know that's not what we're doing. Okay, I asked for something twisted. I asked for, you know, something different from the other series, but I know... I know Lulu was not about to groom this boy. Okay? Like, why is he giving his nigga condoms and money to go fuck this bitch? Let's make it make sense. Is he about to watch? Okay? Is this is this somebody baby mama that he's trying to get back at? What's going on? But we got Rock and Symphony. You know, they chilling on the back uh, on the balcony. You know, he asking if she good. She asking more about him. And I'm listen, I'm telling y'all, we already know where this is going. Either Symphony is about to be Rock's connection to a different life, you know, that she's never ever going to be able to get to, you know, like how Angela was the ghost, or he's going to have some sort of dark past and he's just going to get caught back up in it, right? Courtney, we've seen this story before and we are tired. We are tired, okay? We we did this with Ghost and Angela. We did this with the fucking Puerto Rican cop and, and Mary J. Blige. Like, I'm tired. Can you come up with something else? Okay, so they started talking about buildings and all this shit that Rock knows she don't give a fuck about, but she's just glad to be discussing something other than some street shit. Okay, listen, that street shit be that street shit be stressing all these mamas out. Tasha, Monet, and now Rock. Okay, so this boy is literally fucking this girl in the club, and I'm like, okay, what the hell? When did she even have time to put his dick in? Because I swear to God, they was kissing, and the next thing you know, they fucking, but in the same sequence. I was like, okay. Okay, y'all could have edited that better, but maybe not because they teenagers and I shouldn't even be watching this, okay? But it is a teenager with a grown adult, so should I be watching this but only her and not him? Like, I was so confused, okay? But you got Marvin outside fighting. Lulu was like, fuck that. He can handle his own business. I said, oh, you a shady motherfucker. You a shady motherfucker. But I still don't understand the connection because, again, I tune in and out, so I'm like, maybe he has a right to say that. Maybe he did something to him. Maybe that was his ex Like, I don't know. But Jukebox was in the bathroom. Fucking up some random song. I said, bitch, if you don't come on with this bob. Okay, she was giving bop. She was giving bob with the bops. Okay. Child, not this nigga texting me saying he need attention. Nigga, move. You got me stuttering and shit. Okay. But she was giving bob with the bops. I said, yes, Laverne, no Shirley. Okay, Laverne, anti Cox. Okay. But my problem is, <laughs> here's my problem. She kept going. <laughs> she kept going. I said, Courtney. Y'all want to be Disney Channel so bad. Like, you want to be a Disney Channel original movie, a decom so fucking bad. Why is this bitch still singing through the scenes and going in at that? Like, when the fuck did this shit turn into a musical and why? <laughs> like, you got rock. She's fucking this shit out of Symphony. Okay. And I'm like, oh, girl, you lucky because Symphony is cute. Symphony is cute. Okay. You got Derek and Lulu. They pissing outside. And I'm like, okay. I can't see no dick. I mean, y'all want to show everything else from uh, motherfuckers be fucking, but you're not going to show us a little wee-wee when they pee-pee? Oh, okay. Okay, Courtney. Okay? But that's when Lulu turns around. <clears throat> and let me drink some with a wild pause for dramatic effect. Child, my allergies is really acting up. But that's when Lulu turns around and shoots him, and I'm like, what the fuck? Child, I was so damn confused. Like, was he too good for Kanan? Was he going to be a problem later? Was he going to turn out to be a rat? Like, make it make sense. And how are you going to shoot him with his dick out? So now he dead and his wiener is exposed. I said, damn, double homicide. Okay, <laughs> you got Marvin. He had it to jail for defending his white girl. You know, he's telling her because she like, oh, I never had nobody defend me. He like, yeah, now you do. I said, oh, come on. I feel like I'm going to let them together. Even though she a bitch, I feel like I'm going to let them together, okay? But it's just a lot going on, and I'm like, what the hell? Okay, and that's how the episode ends, you know, with Kane in the bed looking up at the stars, because remember, he's childish. He's childish, okay? Again, this is Get Richard Dodge Ryan. This is, this is truly raising Kanan, okay? And I'm ready for him, him to be a man, okay? This is truly raising Kanan, and I'm so ready for this nigga to be a man, okay? But come on. Already, okay, because this little kitty shit, but still wanting to play with guns, is very much giving Tariq like season four, like when Tariq thought he was a badass. Like, no, grow up, okay. <sighs> Nigga want to be an astrologer so fucking bad, looking at the stars and shit. I said Courtney, Courtney, okay. But like I said, I was so confused as to why they killed that boy. But as I saw on Twitter, 
Um, apparently they killed D Wiz to take the heat off Kanan because they needed a body for the streets, I guess. So I mean, listen, it don't make sense to me, but hey. Hey, um, we're gonna stick with this show because we need to get this channel monetized and you know, consistency, right? And I, you know, I, I miss reviewing shows, but we're gonna see. Let me know what y'all thought about this fucking episode down below. Like, definitely let me know. Let let me know because <coughs> two episodes in, I felt like it was slow as hell. I was confused as hell. Um, because it was a lot going on, but nothing really, right? It wasn't given what 50, you know, said it was supposed to give. And, um, you know, right now, as it stands, this is the worst spinoff, but with the best theme song, like I said at the beginning of this, like, we're going to see where this goes. I mean, like, it's like, and see, that's the thing when you're dealing with shows that be just as, like, good as, like, How to Get Away with Murder or, like, Power or, like, Scandal or, you know, like, these really, really good-ass shows because it's, like, anything that comes after it that's related somehow with the same director, same energy, same whatever, it's, like, you're only as good as your best what do they call it? You're only as good as your last efforts. And it's like Power Book, you know, Power was good. Power Book so Ghost was amazing. Like to me, I like Ghost better than um regular power. Like I like Power Book 2 way better than regular power. But this shit, it's like, yeah, I can do without, you know, because you, you can't like basically when you already start off on a 10, that's what we expect. We expect a hundred after that. Like you can't start off on a 10 with your shows, and then come trying to give a five. Like, it's not going to work. Like, it's still better than most shows out there, but not when you competing against your own work. That's just how I feel. But I'm going to stick it out. You know, I'm, I'm going to stick beside it. I would like to see it, and I'm going to stick beside it. Okay? So let me know what y'all thought about this episode. That in the comment box below. Like I said, let's start there. The podcast will be coming very, very soon. Okay, once I figure out my setup and all of that. Um, and that's just going to be a podcast of me doing social commentary. Like, where every episode, I'm going to talk about a different subject. You know, the episode about the N-word. The episode about, you know, the street life. The episode about fuck niggas. The episode about baby mamas. The episode about, you know, um, LGBT. Like, just me giving my controversial opinions. Okay? Even though nobody asks, I'm going to give them. Okay? So, look out for that. I will be doing Hot Topics as well. You know, let's start that Hot Topics. Um, so, yeah, just be looking out. Bitch, we back. We back. Okay? So, I like each and every one of you all. And I will see you in the next review. Okay? Be looking out for uh, Potomac. That's coming as well. Bye, y'all. Not this being 33 minutes. I hate y'all. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>